We can all agree that the 82 game NHL schedule always manages to screw over our teams. Be it start times, back to backs, or any other scheduling quirk, the NHL schedule is never the most fun thing to look at. And with over 2,500 games to be played in a regular NHL season, it can be a behemoth to dissect. But how is one of the most grueling schedules in sports even created? There's so many factors that you have to consider when making a schedule that it makes your head spin. Things like arena rights, time zones, distances between venues, rivalries, division structures, and specialty games all need to be accounted for. Things get even more wrinkled for the NHL, especially in 2018 since there are currently 31 teams. A lot of times, a schedule can just evenly split up games, kind of like what's done in the NFL with its 32 teams. But with 31 teams in a league, the NHL has to get a little more creative. One keynote in the NHL schedule is that every team must play in every arena at least once. Now let's get to the nitty gritty of schedule building. First off, we have to look at the divisions and conferences. The Eastern Conference, along with the Atlantic and Metropolitan divisions, are aligned perfectly, with 8 teams apiece. The Western Conference is another story, however. The Pacific Division has 8 teams, while the Central Division only has 7 teams. This is where some of the creativity of the schedule makers has to come in. So let's put together some sort of version of an NHL schedule for an Eastern team to begin with, since Eastern and Western teams have different ways of building their schedules. Let's say we're the New York Rangers, we're in the Metro Division with 7 other opponents. Since interdivisional play is heavily prioritized, the Rangers will have to play the other Metro Division teams 4 times. 4 times 7 gives the Rangers 28 games on the schedule. Then comes the games against the other Eastern Conference teams, of which the Rangers will play 3 games total against every non-Metro Division team. Since there are 8 teams in the Atlantic Division, we multiply 3 by 8 and we get 24 games played. And finally, the easiest part, comes the stipulation where every team has to play in every arena at least once. And so to save on gas and other travel costs, the Rangers have to play the 15 Western Conference teams twice, giving us 30 more games played. 28 plus 24 plus 30 gives us a perfect 82 games. And this setup is the exact same for the Atlantic Division. Now the NHL would do some moving around of games to factor in the things I said earlier, like time zones or even an outdoor game, or 2, or 10. And some teams actually have contracts with their arenas that the NHL has to account for. Like the Rangers must play all 41 home games in Madison Square Garden, and if they don't, they have to pay the arena multiple millions of dollars in insurance costs. So if you were wondering why they were the away team in a Winter Classic which was just outside their arena, that's why. But Eastern Conference teams are the easier teams to schedule for. It's the West where it becomes a little… wild. Speaking of wild, let's use them as our Central Division example. Like many of you may know, the Central Division has 7 teams. Because of this and the unbalanced nature of the conferences, the Central has to add a couple games to its divisional matchups. Therefore, the Wild would play 4 games against 4 other Central teams, and 5 games against the remaining 2 Central teams. This gives us 4 times 4 plus 5 times 2. And using your order of operations, you'd get 26 games against divisional opponents. Then comes the games against the other Western teams, of which the Wild would play 3 per team, meaning that 3 times 8 gives us 24 games. And finally we have the games against the 16 Eastern teams. As we know by now, they have to play home and away, so we get 16 times 2 which gives us 32 games played. Smashing together these numbers, 26 plus 24 plus 32, we get, what do you know, 82 games. And finally we get to the division with maybe the weirdest looking number of games played per each section, the Pacific Division. Kinda like how the Central looks strange during its interdivisional play, the Pacific has this as their setup for games against other Pacific teams. A team like the Ducks would have to play 6 of its divisional rivals 4 times, and another divisional rival 5 times. This gives us 4 times 6 plus 5 times 1, equaling a strange looking number of 29 games. It gets way easier after this though. The Ducks would only have to play Central Division teams 3 times total throughout a season, and the Eastern Conference teams 2 times a season. 3 times 7 gives us 21, and multiplying 2 by 16 we get 32. Adding together 29, 21, and 32 we get, hey would you look at that, 82 games played. Again, there's a lot more to it when figuring out all the kinks in the schedule, but that's the general framework of how it's used. So there is some method to the madness here. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.